Today we get to witness the future stars of college basketball and the NBA draft. I'm excited to see all this talent compete on the same court and going head to head. And I know you're excited to see the top player in the class, Cooper Flagg. Well, Cooper Flagg is, he's different now. He's a different type of number one player. His versatility is endless. And he never disappoints with his effort or unselfishness. A double-double and at times a triple-double. This young man can do it all from any spot on the floor and defensively a great shot blocker and he's terrific at getting steals. But Corey, what about the number two player in the class right behind flag Arius Ace Bailey? I wouldn't say he's right behind him. I think these guys are right there together. I think it's 1A and 1B and when you think about Ace Bailey, his ability to score in every level, not just three but four levels, but also has the ability to make plays defensively as we see him making steals and blocking shots and more importantly getting buckets. And how about that? Kid from Georgia going to Rutgers, part of by far the best class in Rutgers basketball history, along with Dylan Harper, who is Bailey's teammate this week with the West. There he is, the best point guard in the class of 2024. The West in the white, the East in the red. And the scrimmage underway as we play with a running clock today. This is the first time that all this talent has been on the same court. We saw practices where they break down east and west. Now they get a chance to compete against each other. This and is what you play for. Like, pinch me. Is this real? It is absolutely real. Not only Steve Peichel, but give my guys Brandon Knight and Marlon Smoke Williamson a lot of credit for. And on that high school team at Montverde, number one in the country, 30 and 0. Cooper Flagg and Liam McNeely also in this game. Queens teammates. Harper downhill. Oh, Bailey with the follow. The whistle blew. The most McDonald's All-Americans this year. It's happened before. They had four in this game a year ago. Carter Bryant, shot blocked. By Bryson Tucker. Yeah, John Calipari wants to mix the young with the old. He's going to go out to the portal, get a few transfers, and he will. Oh, this is from deep for Tucker, and he rattles it home. He approaches the game defensively. Paulie, you mentioned the driveway for Cooper Flagg. That's where he told us he fell in love with the game, playing with his twin brother, Ace. One of his first memories also was as a second grader playing AAU ball up on the fourth grade team. Oh, what a pass. And it's as Reed Shepard made a name for himself. No doubt. Former McDonald's All-American. Just last year. And Fland, oh, shifting gears. How about that, a high off the window. Corey's with the number one player in the country. That's right, hanging out with Cooper Flagg, who Paul Biancardi not only says the number one player in the country, but also the most competitive guy in the country. How important is it for you guys to win this scrimmage and more importantly to win the game on Tuesday? Uh, yeah, I mean, they, I think it means everything to us. You know, we are just a bunch of competitors, and that's really the main thing right now, I just want to win. That's one of the things I've said about this class is the most competitive class that we've seen come through here in a long time. Your course at the front of that. What is it about this group that makes you guys make winning so important? Um, I mean, I think it's just our personalities. Um, I think everybody just fell in love with competing, and that's really what it comes down to is we all just want to win so badly. We hate losing, and so that's just what motivates us to win. All right, self-evaluation. Are you better offensively or defensively right now? Uh, probably defensively. Um, I feel like I can guard most positions, um, and I think that there's just so much growth that I can have offensively and defensively. I think it's a lot more offensively like growth. Appreciate Coop making me look good. I just said that, that your, the defense was your superpower right now, even though offensively you got a little bit of game. My guy. On Coleman in 2012. Now he opened some eyes this morning in front of the NBA scouts. He was knocking down jump shots in the scrimmage. A lot of NBA scouts come up to me and said, who is that guy again? 6'10", athletic, and was burying threes. He's got a face-up game. He oh. did that back into this now, trailing by four. Defense can absolutely help. Mathia ahead to McNeely and count it with a foul. So we actually beat him twice in St. Louis. Were you there? Of course I was there. Okay, I just want to make it because I, I, I didn't see any receipts on that game. <laughs> I was looking for receipts. No, I, I was there, absolutely. Okay. And I was, as as you saw was somewhat officiating that game as well. Of course, the first ever Jason Tatum elite camp. Paul was waiting for the box score. <laughs> Edgecombe. Speaking of him, lost on the way up, foul call. Watching the last couple of practices and watching the scrimmage now, you see these guys are in great physical condition. 
everyone took this serious once they got nominated back in, in January. You can tell the level of conditioning is high, their skill level is sharp, they're playing together. Ian Jackson has clearly worked on his jump shot and he's taking good shots. But part of that too, PB, and as you very well know, with Nationals coming up next week, many of these guys will, will see playing later this week and trying to win a national championship in Hinkle, no, not Hinkle Field. I was, where, where, where is? Brownsburg. Brownsburg in Indiana, right? Hinkle is the NIT final. Yeah, I knew it was one of them. You got basketball <laughs> on the brain. That's good. Yeah, that's Chipotle Nationals starting Thursday on ESPNU. All four quarterfinal matchups for the boys starting at 2 Eastern. Edgecombe and Long Island Lutheran Woo! will be in the 4-5 game. Oh, oh, oh. Flag, McNeely, and Queen with number one Montverde in the nightcap at 8 Eastern Thursday on ESPNU. Okay, boys, fourth quarter. Somebody's going to ratchet up, and it could be this Jackson guy. Jackson <laughs> off the window, two and a foul. Yes, I can. <laughs> <laughs> he played in that game against them and with them. Hey, all I know is I went to go see Jalen Rose play, and I knew we couldn't get him at BC, so we got Howard Isley instead. There you go. And it was a great get. As that was a great get for Donnie Freeman knocking down the three ball at the buzzer. Against the smaller Trey Johnson. Trying to find Jackson, and it's a steal by Bailey. Harper the pass and edge come the finish. The West in front approaching the final minute. Boy, the girls game went down to the last shot by Liv McGill. And the boys game coming down to the wire as well. We have not seen anyone over dribble in this game. This has been an unselfish play by each team. Queen the kick, McNeely. Oh, a wedgie. <laughs> Finding Aiden Shirell, his high school teammate at Prolific Prep, but Shirell could not finish. Flynn. And here comes Freeman. Shirell at 6'11", stepping out. The ball just holds somebody when they cut. McNeely, the lob, looking for Queen, out of bounds, and that does it. Tell you what, if give him a second. Was, give if, him a second. If this in any way was a precursor to what we're going to see Tuesday night, a oh, point three gives him enough time for a tip. A catch and shoot. No, no, you can't catch and shoot in point three. You got to have point four to catch and shoot. It can only be a tip with point three seconds. All right, so we'll lob it to Cooper Flag at the rim. Looks like Boogie Fland, the Kentucky signee, will put it in play. They'll set a back screen for Flag. And the girls game came down to an inbound play at the buzzer. How about the boys game? McNeely catch and shoot. Oh, give it to him. You cannot. The reality behind it is it is not possible to catch and shoot with 0.3 seconds. You can't catch and shoot. You cannot. Carter by the, the, you cannot catch and shoot with 0.3 seconds. And so at the end of the day, when the officials come over and say 0.3 seconds, it is not allowed to do it. And that's exactly what every member of the West team is arguing right now as Liam McNeely says, call me, as he rings it up at the buzzer. <laughs> Just play but, overtime, guys, and yes, settle it in overtime. That would be the best case scenario. Controversy in, in the, the McDonald's All-American Boys Scrimmage. Would you have it any other way as the class of 2024 shows just how competitive it is? And that is the, that is the best thing about this class. Not only the level of talent, however, the fact that these guys want to go out and compete only 